thank everybody for being here to support the industry, agriculture industry, and the rancher, and the state's rights. There's a lot of issues here that I think get covered up. In, uh, <laughs> but I appreciate you coming, Michael. I appreciate you coming and uh, setting us up. Tell you what's, what's happening is, uh, is they're using the Endangered Species Act. They're trying to give the rodents more life than industry, uh, than the state, and the rancher. Okay? Uh, a lot of the people you see on the other corner think this is about privatizing public land. It, it, it's nothing further from the truth. When we say we're allotment owners, it's uh, it's ownership of forage rights that we were given by Congress in the Act of 1866, in the uh, Stock Raising Act of 1916 or 12, and, and, and the Taylor Grazing Act, and, and such acts as those. In no way, in no way are we trying to privatize public land. But if they, if they remove the industry, the ranchers from that, then there's those people across the street are going to be next. Exactly. They're, they're next. Coming I down the pipe. This is about getting people off of the land. Okay, we all saw what happened on the spotted owl camp. We saw families devastated. You saw industries closed down. You saw tax uh, tax bases in the millions of dollars that were shut down. And, uh, you saw schools closed. You saw the uh, we saw the economic stability of the community. The rural community is absolutely devastated. Now we're at risk. The rancher and livestock producer is at risk because of the Mexico country. Okay, and I want everybody to understand that there's really two issues here. One is the Endangered Species Act, which which uh, I think that's my fault, but I believe. What is the Endangered Species Act? But more importantly to me right now is states' rights. The government was never intended to come over and take states' rights. Water is states' rights. Water is the most precious resource that we have. By their own admission, they have said in front of the OSC, the state engineer, that their intent was to back the water up, slow it down, and absorb it in the ground. The Forest Service is charged with two things, and two things only by Congress. Number one is to provide timber. They stop that when the spotted owl comes into effect. The other thing is to supply a continuous flow of water. The only way they can control people is by controlling the water. And I'll, I'll tell you what, it, it's so, so important. We were lucky enough to we have we have uh, representatives and senators in this state that have signed on to try to help us. Fifty of them have been contacted the governor and have been to meetings with OSC to try to get the state of New Mexico to assume their jurisdiction over water rights, state rights, and also valid existing rights of the sovereign citizens of this state. And that, and until we get to that point, the feds are going to run the shop of us. So there is, I want everybody to understand, there's more than just the Endangered Species Act. When we start talking about states' rights in our field trips and meetings, they shut the meetings down. But they don't want to talk about that. And some of the state officials don't eat We are pretty unique in the state of New Mexico in having a Supreme Court ruling it was done in 1978. Uh, it's known as the Mexico versus U.S. It was held up by the Mexico Supreme Court and also the U.S.
Supreme Court justice that give the state of New Mexico the intent to have really enough. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you in the first meeting that we had with the OSC what we were told. And if this, if this is not outrageous, then uh, we all need to go home. But when we were, when we asked the, the state engineer uh, and his counsel the interpretation of the New Mexico versus the United States, they, what they told us is they were blackmailed by the federal government. And so they chose to implement a policy to ignore that Supreme Court ruling and give them the money. That's what we were told by it. Six credible witnesses that can give affidavits to that effect. Okay. But we are unique in New Mexico because we did. They spent in excess of two and a half million dollars in 1978 to ensure the water for the citizens. And then two years later, they were blackmailed by the Forest Service and they implemented policy to ignore it. Now, if, if that's, I've been, I've been told by people when they lied to you, but we don't have the option of, when we ask them a question, we don't have the option of determining whether it's a lie or whether it's the truth. We have to assume that it's the truth. And if it is a lie, then we need to even know the truth. Because for 35 years, we've been wondering what the truth is. Okay, water is the most precious resource that we have. And I'll tell you what, if, if you let them get control of this water and start putting it back into the ground, everybody in the state is a stakeholder. Everybody in the state. You're also a stakeholder if they kill this industry, if you eat meat. Now, there's people that think that government <laughs> should own everything and that everybody should be vegetarian. I'm, you know, that's their right, but to impose that on the rest of the state is absolutely wrong. Okay, if, if you let them close this industry, you're going to see feed prices go out of this world. You're not going to be, you're going to eat a lot of chicken and pork. And the other thing is, you're going to get beef shipped in here by open trade from Brazil and Argentina that is not what you're used to getting. Okay, so it's not just the ranchers that's at stake here. Somehow we have to get everybody to understand that everybody that drinks water, that eats meat, is a stakeholder in this fight. If you believe that states have rights and jurisdiction over water, then you're a stakeholder. If you believe that government should own everything and that we should all be vegetarians, then we need to all walk across the street. Because that, that's what the state is. The rancher, the rancher, the livestock producer, takes better care of the land than the Forest Service does. Yes. It's his livelihood. Absolutely. It's Amen. His, his livelihood. We are in a culture, a culture that we don't want to see destroyed like we saw the timber industry. It's very, very important to this day. And that, I mean, I could just go on for hours. I could tell you things that make the skin crawl about what we've learned uh, about this attempt to take over our water. And if, if the state is going to uh, just stand by and if they build a fence parallel to a, to a stream bed and the state says they have no jurisdiction in it, then all, all they have to do is build a fence and it makes the state, the OSE, irrelevant, invalid. I hope you guys understand that. Because actually what they're doing is irrigating. They're, they uh, they took out applications for water rights to satisfy a beneficial use with livestock and wildlife, which is fraudulent. Because they own no livestock, and according to Supreme Court ruling, there is no reserve uh, rights for the wildlife. They've always been able to drink, but it doesn't stop them from drinking. Okay, but when they put those fences around them, actually what they've started doing is irrigating. And they've irrigated those exposure to the point that it's given us a road that has more rights than we do. And it's, it's going to take the industry away. Right now, Sacramento grazing is the largest allotment in the region, not just in New Mexico, but in New Mexico and Arizona. They've had a target on their back for years and years, and if we let them go under, you'll see the rest of them, you'll see the rest of the allotments go under.
this is not about privatizing public land. This is not about well, keeping other users off the boards. This is about just keeping the industry going and letting the rancher raise his cattle to feed American people. They, they have no idea. We've asked that question. They have no idea how many mice there is. They have no idea how many mice they need. They have no recovery plan. We don't even know if there is any. They're, they're bogus reports by uh, uh, biologists named Jennifer, Jennifer Fry that has gone out and given these studies and she can pay very, very well. Uh, it, it's just so ridiculous, people. I've been in this for four or five years, and it, it's just appalling what's happening. But, but their plan is to control people by controlling one, to get, to get people off the land. So I'm, I'm really glad to see uh, County Commissioner Ronnie Reardon here and uh, State Representative Yvette Harrell. She has been uh, she has been so big in trying to get the state to step to the plate. And I'll tell you what, people, we need to do everything we can to make sure that she retains her position as state representative. Yes. Because her opponent is across the street. Okay? And and really those folks over there don't have a clue what they're talking about. You know. So I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Ronnie and, and Event uh, try to back me up a little bit, maybe clarify some things that I said. Yeah, it's a speaker. I want to thank everyone for coming out. Uh, I especially want to just take a moment and remember remember the boy who uh, gave his life in this fight. Uh, and uh, we need to always keep him in the family of America we can be next. That's a true statement. Uh, I'm going to take a little different from Gary. Uh, I can repeat what Gary says, everything he says. I agree with 100%. But I was elected in uh, my first term back in 1992. He took office in January 1993. I served about eight years. I set out eight years and then I was elected again. I'm just about to finish up at the end of this year. Another eight years. And it didn't take me long when I first got in office to realize this issue, it is that everything Gary said, but let me tell you from the uh, perspective of an elected official. You take away one of the industries and they took away our logging, it's devastating to this, to this nation, to this county, to the people who pay taxes. Uh, way of life, houses quit selling. Uh, this world became a, a whole different place. And uh, we said, who's next? Well, it, it looks like the ranchers are the ones they want to take out next. And when you take away that industry, I honestly can't tell you how this county is going to survive. And uh, that's a real statement. I mean, a real true statement. We, we do survive off of all of it. It's a meat engine for uh, running, but we know the federal government will pick that up and go tomorrow. And uh, uh, to give you an example of what the federal government can do, and this will just blow your mind, uh, all those children who are illegal aliens who are here displaced from their families, they spent multi-million dollars. In one month, they spent enough money to run the county's budget for one year. They finally got everybody on board and both those kids here, the federal government did. They come out to Holloman, they, they displaced people out of El Paso, made them come here and rent houses, bilingual people, they, they, they just moved the people in. I mean millions, I'm talking 60, 70 million dollars spent. They were here two weeks and they left. Everyone that got displaced just left hanging. They had to go back into jobs. And that's just an example of what the federal government overreach over states can do. And uh, Gary said it exactly right. We, we need to take our state rights back. And that's been my fight for the last 15 years. And it'll be my fight until the day I die, I believe that state rights are the rights that we have. We have a right to govern ourselves. We have a right to tell how we want it done. And uh, I've lived that. I think my record shows it strongly that I've stood strong for that. And uh, the day we quit doing that's the day 
they're going to win. And the other side over there, I've talked to them because I represent all people. I don't represent just one group. And uh, I try to talk to them, and when I do, they won't talk with me because since they start running the ball, they learn their role and they walk off. They're coming to the meetings, they just keep, they just keep yelling, though. And it's sad. And then, um, I, I will be out, like I said, this year, but Laura, and she's not here yet, but uh, uh, Lord Bees will be taking over the slot. And I'm very excited. I believe she's the right person to take that slot. Amen. She's going to do a good job. I do. Uh, you can disagree with me if you said that. But, I said uh, amen. Oh, I thought you said disagree. No, I said amen. I, I think she's the right person. She's got the heart to keep this fight up. And you all will need to support your commission. Uh, Commissioner White's here today. He's supporting you all. And... Uh, as long as they got a vote on the board, they can keep going forward. But when they lose that vote, it's going to stop with us too. And it'll be just up to the, the ranchers and the people to make the plan. And I and I got to say, I'm so proud of our representative here. There's not been a better representative I've known in my own 28, six years of doing this. I think this one right here. Uh, she puts out more effort, more time. Oh. And, uh, and she's Amen. Not, and she's not bad to look at either. So. And, uh, Amen. Uh, and I just love her to pieces. I uh, worked with her dad and uh, enjoyed that. And, and I'm looking forward for her being reelected and, and keep continuing. So uh, we got to keep the fight up. I'm here today because uh, it's the right place to be. And, and all of these protests, they, they bring a little attention. The real works in, in the ditches where these guys work every day, speaking with the attorney, U.S. attorney, uh, governor, water people. we got to keep it up. we got to keep the fight going. Uh, you know, nobody will, and it's up to all of us. So I'm going to turn over to Mrs. Harold here, and uh, let you wow a little bit here. Good. All right, all right. I'm going to talk loud because we need to make some noise so our people over there can hear us. Right. Uh, S T O N E. Is that Gary? G A R Y. S T O N E. Yes. Yeah. 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 Here and support one another, and you know what? We have moved so far away from God, and so far away from oh, everybody, yeah. and so far away from principle. That's what this is about. Amen. We've got to stand on principle, and we've got to stand on our Constitution, protecting our ranchers, protecting any industry, and protecting any family that deserves protection. Yeah, and what yeah. it is about, really? these children that are here. Yeah. It is the future of our country. And if we don't stand for it, then who will? Because we can't Michael. count on the folks over there because it's sad, but true. They are misinformed and they will not yes, open sir. their minds to the Constitution. My opponent had a meeting the other day. Somebody brought the Constitution to her. She said, what's that? He goes, it's the Constitution. And she said, and I quote, <laughs> what version? <laughs> we are, we are smarter There's than only they are. We've got to start making sure that our voices are heard on whatever level of government, local, state, county, federal. We've got to get rid of those that are not doing the people's work, and we've got to support, like hell, the ones that are, because they are few and far between. It is a tough road. It's hard to stand up for rights. I have paid for it. You have no idea because people in our own party don't support states' rights and the Constitution. We have got to weed out those that don't, get back to what our forefathers had in life and our God-given rights and stand for something. And I'm so grateful we're here today, even though it's a million degrees. I'm hoping that rain clock gets a little closer. But this is what it takes. This is what it means. Seeing old glory, seeing the red, white, and blue, seeing people want to stand out here and stand for something. And by now, we're going to do it. And we're going to do it good. And I don't care if there's only 50 people here. It's the 50 that matter this minute. But we got to get our neighbors out. we got to vote. And we've got to still continue to understand what the issues are. Gary is right. The issue, he can tell you stories. We don't have to go into the weeds on this. All we really need to know is it's wrong. we got to fix it. It's not about our Constitution. It's not standing up for each other. And really, at the end of the day, that equals federalism. And if you believe in federalism, then this is where you need to be. But it's unfortunate because there are, there's fear-mongering everywhere. 
We don't want to sell the lands. We don't want to, why would we? We've got 112 years of use on this property. We enjoy it for a variety of reasons. But you don't have to be a rocket scientist to see the condition of our forest. And I will tell you, it wasn't the state legislature or anybody in government here that shut these forests down this last week. It was the U.S. Forest Service because of an Invesco meadow jumping mouse. I think Bluff Springs is closed because of that. No camping, no anything, because the mouse may or may not appear. We don't even know if it exists. Either. I'm telling you, this is just another facade. And if the mouse gets off the list, there's 1,400 more animals they'll put on it. It's time for the American people to take a stand and have their voices heard. Amen. Today, by doing this, is what we're doing. And I'm right. Right. Amen. Every one of you for being here. Thank you. You, you want to just for a second? Hey folks, I'm uh, Paul Sanchez. I go by Mass Sanchez on Facebook, and my page is those who show up inside. Let me tell you why I'm here. I happen to like a good steak. That's number one. Everybody right. favor a good cross rare steak? All right. But number two, what's more important to me than necessarily the ranchers' rights is exactly what Yvette was just talking about, and that's states' rights. We are a sovereign state. Each state in the United States is a sovereign state. The federal government should not be deciding for Washington what we do here in New Mexico. They don't have a clue. They simply don't have a clue. Now the other thing, the, the point of my page is those who show up beside you people showed up today. Now what you need to do after this rally is contact your friends, contact your neighbors. Tell them they have to show up. Posting a meme on Facebook does not result in anything. Getting your friend and neighbor to go out to the polls, vote for folks like Steve Pierce, vote for folks like the Herald, that's what gets it done. If you don't do that, you're getting nowhere and you're getting nowhere really fast. This is about states' rights and our own sovereignty right here in New Mexico. I'm actually a New Yorker. I was born and raised a Democrat. Then I joined the Air Force and learned real quick that it is about states' rights and about the individual citizen, which is who you people are. I'm proud here for me and my son, Atlas, the better looking one down here, all right, to have come out and stood with you. And I appreciate everything you guys do. But remember, it's on you. You have to go out there. You have to vote. You have to get your friends and families to vote. Because otherwise, I guarantee you, across the street over there, they are going to get their people to come out and vote. Yes. Flat out, dead serious, they are going to do that. Yes. So you got to make a change. Thank you very much. Yes. Woo! Thank you. Yeah, you hey, uh, just really, just really quick, um, you know, anybody interested next week, Thursday and Friday, the agricultural, the water and agricultural panel, legislative committee is going to be in El Gordo at the Tay Center. The New Mexico jumping mouse is going to be one of the topics we discuss, and I would encourage anybody that has time to get out there, hear what the legislators are hearing from the different parties, and have have an opportunity to speak to the legislators on that committee. But it'll be next Thursday and Friday at the Tay Center. I think, it, I think it starts like at 9 o'clock in the morning. It'll go all day, both days, and then Contact me or one of these ranchers and we'll get an answer for you. Yeah, let me just give you the number to my office. Which would be my cell phone number. So it's 575 430 Yeah, it's 575 430 And that's the best way to reach me for sure. So, And I'm happy to visit with anybody about any of these issues. and help you get connected with the right group for the right ranch or the right legislature. Well, they don't need the spotted. The smile, she says, to the internet jumping. It's not in our forest because they're too dang thick and overgrown. Where they do feed on them is over in the hospital forest. Where it looks great. Thanks again for everybody being there. It's awesome. Huh? Michael, you want to talk a little bit? Does anybody have any questions about what's going on up there? Any, any more uh, questions about what's going on? Did you find that the government has got difficulty having nice reasons? 
in having mice reproduce. Do you think the government would have trouble with that? Well, it seems like to me that, that yes, they would have absolutely a lot of trouble. I, I think they would shoot them. You know, it's, what's funny is that we have fisheries where you fish the fish that go back to the lakes and thousands and thousands of people fish to New Mexico, go to a lakes and streams that are stocked, and yet the federal government would have trouble having them ice reproduce? Uh, yeah, you know, that that's so bizarre. But, but I, I don't, I want everybody to understand this is not about mouse. This, exactly. This is what they use. It just happens to be the biggest hammer they have in their toolbox. This is not about a mouse. This is about getting people off the land, controlling our water of the state. They just use the Endangered Species Act to do that. And, and keep in mind, the mouse is only out of its, uh, of its habitat in terms of eating and reproducing for, 30, or, uh, for 90 days in a year. So for, for nine months it hibernates. And it's only you can only find it for those those 90 days, and it's from the mid, mid beginning to mid June, and then for 90 days. So that's why it's we're venting off all the water for the entire rest of the year, even though this mouse is only actually viable and out and active for, the, for 90 days throughout the year. And it's about it all eat them anyway. Yeah. Right? Okay. Uh, Let me just give you a few more things that you need to think about. Uh, and, and then I want to get to, to the Sacramento grazing. The, uh, the the water issues, like I said, were pre-adjudicated way pre-1907, uh, before the Office of the State Engineer. The whole decree did that. There's downstream users that have uh, a, a, an irrigation right, water right, is a detachable, uh, transferable, sellable water right, just like a mineral right is. We. Uh, those of us that have those, we pay taxes on that water. Okay, it increases it, your value. They're stopping it way up above. That's our that, and they cannot say that it's not a personal property, that it's not a value. Okay, and and it's determined by Supreme Court ruling again that they do have no reserve water rights. Okay, yeah. they cannot just come in there and spend your cows off when they use our cows and wildlife as beneficial use. Okay, they've started irrigating. The other thing that I want to bring to point is Sacramento grazing. Sacramento grazing, uh, before the spotted owl, they were lost. The family was in the, in the timber industry. So when, uh, when the spotted owl come in there and shut the industry down, then they, they went into ranching out of, that's all they had left to do. Okay, and they went into ranching. Now they're at risk again, and I cannot begin to tell you, and it's not just Sacramento grazing, it's both in family ranch and John ranches, but these, these people are under threat of losing their livelihoods for no just cause at all. There is a thing called due process and just compensation. If they're going to take this stuff away from those people, they need to be compensated. They need due process. None of that's happening, and that's the reason that we have asked the state of New Mexico to stand up for the sovereign citizens of this state. I, I'll say it again. I said it once. I'll say it again. If they can take, if they can take that away from you, they can come down here and take anything away from anybody. The government overreaches is is going to extend to everybody. If they come down here and take your front and backyard, and then you you go into a negotiation and uh, decide that. Then they, they tell you, well, you can have your front yard, but we're going to keep your back. Don't don't take that as a win. All you did is lost your backyard. And that's what they're trying to do to us. You know, they're, now they're in a in a mode trying to negotiate. Uh, so, so we'll be happy with it. But it, it's going to affect the industry. It affects our school systems. It affects our tax base and everything else. Spike or Kelly, would you all like to say anything? These are some of the most honest people, hardworking people that you'll ever see in your life. They're, they're not out there. You know, some people call them welfare ranches. All of these welfare ranches would say we're on subsidy and all that. It, that is absolutely not true. This is one of the hardest working families I've ever met. I've known them all my life. And uh, I'll tell you what, it's, it's just so disheartening to see what the federal can do government can do to families and industry and states' rights. So, again, I'm glad that you're here. Uh, join us in this effort. Uh, uh, 
call or write to the governor, try to get her on board. Uh, we have to have somebody from the state to, to intervene before we're going to lose the call. Because the feds, the feds are not going to lose the call. Their agenda is going forward if the states don't intervene. Uh, again, I appreciate everybody's participation. I appreciate you being here. Anybody else want to say anything? The, the microphone's open. John, Johnny Bell just showed up. I don't Johnny Bell able. just showed up. I'll tell you what, he'll say a lot. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to sign off. Can I get your phone where you work and uh, what you're doing? Uh, well, as as the new uh, my name is Gary Stone. I'm a, a fourth generation ranger. I, my family is the only family left out of the country we've done homestead out been on the land that much and, and we've taken care of it. Okay. You want to put out your cell phone number? I'm uh, I'm also a past president uh, past uh, president of the Ontario County Cattlemen Association right now I'm on, on the board of directors. I'm a director for the New Mexico cattle growers and I'm also a representative for the state New Mexico and the allotment owners that represents eleven states in the southwest. And uh, would you like to give your office number? Well, I, I, I will. My office number is also my cell phone number is 575-430-3759. Uh, I have two lines call coming into my house. They're both busy most of the time. 575-687-3742. 575-687-3742. And what, what can the average citizen do to I'm unite on this cause? I'll tell you what the average citizen, the most important thing that the average citizen of the state of New Mexico could do at this point would to be uh, talk to your rep, to your representative in the Senate and, and make a, try to get in contact with the governor of this state. The governor holds the key. The governor holds the key. The the people, the Secretary of the National Department of Agriculture is appointed. The uh, state engineer from the Office of the State Engineer is appointed. And really their hands are, uh, this may not be politically correct, their hands are tied unless the governor wants to become a board. And, uh, and in the state of New Mexico, everybody... I've, I've got four states. I went all the way to, to uh, Colorado last week. There's the, in the Fort Warner area. Nearly everybody's watching New Mexico. Why don't we in New Mexico make a stand? And you will not believe the states that come on board because this is it's not it's not just happening in New Mexico. It's happening all across the, the Southwest. Uh, to destroy the industry. They want us to be dependent on foreign countries for our food, just like we are with gas and oil. It, it just doesn't make rocket science. Uh, I don't know if I answered your question. I ran the wrong one. Okay. Okay. Again, uh, we got Johnny. You want to come and say something? Uh, let's do it. Uh, you bet. Okay, you bet you. <laughs> uh, I'm just in the air right now. Just like what's going on with the forest issue and the, the phantom theoretically that exists in the house. And, and I don't have the kind of, I've lived it in my boots and details that you have and so forth. But from an attorney's perspective, it seems to me that this is an example of the incremental attempt of the federal government to take basically our lives away from us and whatever we have to do. I think that the solution, people talk about getting back to the Constitution. You don't want to get back to this Constitution. Our judicial interpretation has turned our original Constitution into something the Founding Fathers never would have recognized. And so being constitutional today, doesn't really mean anything and it doesn't provide any real remedy because the, the, the Tenth Amendment that preserves the rights to the states has been completely gutted, essentially. So what I want to do as a very, very small, you know, minor support in this is I want to start giving classes in the counties on the original Constitution 
and the case law and the, and the decisions that caused it to get oh, really? twisted okay. from what it originally was and what it was originally intended to be into what it is now. And that's important because the answer to all of this is not going back to the Constitution because it doesn't really work anymore, more or less. The answer is a legislative answer. We've got to give our representatives to go in there and statutorily fix the things that the judges have screwed up in the Constitution. Does that make sense? The original, well, but, but, they, but they, have, they have decided that it doesn't mean that anymore. So we've got to get the legislators to fix the meaning of it, the interpretation, the interpretation of it. But the problem with that is, why wasn't Hillary a straight guy? <laughs> yeah. No, no, seriously, why wasn't she a guy that Larry King was allowed, the one guy just still alive that was a Clinton insider, it's on my Facebook page. Larry Nichols said the reason she wasn't invited is because she had so much stuff on everybody in Congress, senators, prosecutors, Department of Justice, prosecutors, etc., that not a one of them dared bucking her because she she would show the evidence that Mr. So and so is a pedophile, Mr. So and so is having an affair, blah 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 blah. So we need probably a new crop of legislators. We need to get rid of most of the people. Let's, we'll keep Steve Pierce. We need to get rid of the people we have, and we need to get the people that they don't have dirt on. And then, when the people show up and make it clear to them that we're not going to put up with it anymore, if you do what we want you to do, or you're out of there, if we do that, then we can get our country back. We can get those legislatures to fix the Constitution statutorily. But I don't think we've got a chance. So what stands between us now, being where we are and where we want to get to, we somehow have got to get the word out to individual people that are totally checked out of the process of politics. We've got to get the word out to them that this is what the problem is, this essentially, and this is how you fix it. And so my, my little bitty, tiny little piece in this is give me about, give me about six weeks, I'm going to start giving free talks in the Ontario County on the Constitution, what they wrote it to me, and how it got to where it is now, and what kind of laws and statutes would fix it. But the more important thing is we just got to get the people to understand we've got to get rid of these incumbents. Because, and we're not going to find perfect people. As, as individual people, we have to be forgiving and tolerant of our representatives. No one is a perfect person. We're all born, you know, naked and hungry, as they say on earth. And we've got to, and we all grow and we do the best we can. None of us are perfect, and God knows I'm not perfect. But we've got to get people in there who are not afraid. We need some heroes. We don't need any more freaking politicians. Yeah. So we have to thanks. Appreciate it. Johnny? Rick, you want to? You got anything? Johnny? Mike? I'm all set. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Well, I, I guess that's, that's it. If anybody has any questions, wants more update, you know, I can stand up here and talk to you for, for hours. I've been in this still for four years.